Hello and welcome back to another Godot tutorial. In this tutorial, I want to show you how you can create the flocking behavior using the Boyd's algorithm. And before we start writing the code, I want to talk about the algorithm itself and how it works. So to use the algorithm, we need to follow three rules. So the first one is separation. And what it means is that the Boyd's are going to try to avoid colliding with other Boyd's by keeping a safe distance from their neighbors. The second one is alignment, and it's going to make the boys try to move in the same direction as their neighbors. And the third one is cohesion, which means that the boys are going to try to stay close to their neighbors to form a cohesive group or flock. So what we are going to do is create a function for each of the rules, which means that each of them is going to give us a vector 3D that we are going to use to calculate the AI velocity. Okay, so let's start with a new project. Let's open a new 3D scene. I'm going to change the name of the node 3D to Spaceship Manager. And let's create a new script. Let's create a new folder. And let's save it inside of that. And I'm going to create a new class name, so class name Spaceship Manager. And now I'm going to export a few variables. So the first variable is going to be the number of units that we want to create. And the second variable is going to be our map limits that we're going to use to spawn the units inside of that limit. So we don't need the process function, so I'm going to delete it. And for now, let's save it like that. Let's create a new folder and save it inside of that. Now let's create a new scene. Again, it's going to be a 3D scene. And for the spaceship, I'm going to use this carrier FBX file that I downloaded on HIO. So I'm going to edit and let's save it. So control S. Let's change the name to spaceship and save it. Let's do the same thing here. And let's add a new script. And inside of it, I'm going to export a few variables. So the three first variables are the alignment weight, the cohesion weight, and the separation weight. And the fourth one is the neighbor radius that we are going to check. So previously, I used constant instead of the variables. So that's why the name is like that. And next, let's add two more variables the max speed and the minimum speed that we want to add to the unit. And let's also add the max acceleration and the rotation speed. So the rotation speed is going to be how fast the unit is going to rotate towards the velocity that we give it. Next, let's create the variables for the vectors that we're going to create for each function. So we got the alignment vector, the cohesion vector, and the separation vector. And we also need to count how many spaceship we have in the group. So we're going to create a variable for that. Variable count, it's going to be equal to zero for now. And the last two variables that we need to create are the unit array. So all the spaceship in the group. And we're also going to create a vector three for the velocity. Now we don't actually have to create a new uh, variable for that. If for example, you're using the character body 3D, then you don't need to create the this variable. You just need to set the velocity of the body and call the move and slide function. Next, in the ready function, I'm going to call randomize because I want to set a value for the speed between the minimum speed and the max speed. Next, let's delete the process function. I'm going to use the physics process instead. Now, each time we are going to calculate each of the vectors, we need to set the vector three back to zero. Next, I'm going to create a for loop for each unit in the group that we have. And I'm going to check the distance between the current spaceship and each of the neighbors it have. And we also need to exclude ourselves from the rest of the units. So if unit is not equal to self and the distance is smaller than the neighbor radius, then we're going to add that unit velocity to the alignment vector. For the cohesion, we're going to add that unit global position. And for the separation, we're going to add the global position of the unit minus the global position of the neighbor unit. 
and we're going to divide it by the distance between them. And the last thing that we need to do is add one to the count. Next, we're going to check if the count is bigger than zero, meaning we have other spaceship inside of the group, then we need to calculate the velocity. And to do that, we also need to calculate each of the vectors. So I'm going to create a function for each of them. And let's create the first one for the alignment. So I'm going to write function calculate alignment. And the first thing that I'm going to do is divide it by the number of units that we have in the group. Next, we're going to normalize it. So the, so the length of the vector is going to be 1. And I'm going to multiply it by the max speed. And from that vector, I'm going to subtract the velocity. Next, we're going to check if the length of the new alignment vector is bigger than the max acceleration. Then we're going to normalize it again and multiply it by the max acceleration. That is just to make sure that we don't exceed the max acceleration. Next, we're going to calculate the cohesion vector. So we're going to write function calculate cohesion. And it's going to be pretty much the same thing, except for the start. In here, we're going to, again, take the vector and divide it by the number of units that we have in the group. And then we're going to subtract the global position from it. And for the last function, the separation function, we're going to write calculate separation. So again, we're going to take the vector and divide it by the group number. Then check if the length of the vector is bigger than zero. And the rest of the code is going to be pretty much the same thing. So after creating these three functions, we're going to go back to our physics process function. And now we need to calculate the velocity using all of the three vectors. So we're going to write velocity plus equals the alignment multiplied by the alignment weight, plus the cohesion multiplied by the cohesion weight, and plus separation multiplied by the separation weight. Next, we're going to write if velocity dot length is bigger than the max speed, then we're going to give the velocity a random speed between the minimum speed and the max speed. Now you don't have to do that, but if you want more diversity for the spaceship speed, then you can use it. And I also noticed that some of the spaceship don't move at all, so if the length is equal to zero, then we're going to do the same thing and give it a random value. And then again, we're going to normalize it and multiply it by the max speed. And the last thing that we need to calculate is the rotation towards the new velocity. So what we're going to do is create a direction from the velocity. I'm going to create a variable for the rotation of the unit. And this is pretty much the code to rotate between the current basis of the unit to the basis that we want it to be. So we're going to get the target basis that we want to move to. So we're getting the basis class. We're going to use the looking at function. And we're going to give it the direction and we need to give it the vector free up. Next, we're going to get our current basis. And we're going to create a variable for the rotation multiplied by delta. And then we're going to calculate the new basis that we want. So it's going to be equal to the current basis. And then we're going to normalize it. And then we're going to use the slope function, which pretty much will collect the linear interpolation function. So I'm going to move smoothly between two points. The S is for spherical linear interpolation. And we're going to give it the target basis and the rotation speed that we want. And T, that is going to be the rotation speed multiplied by delta. And the last thing that we need to do is set the transform basis to the new basis. And after we did all of that, we just need to set the global position plus equals to the velocity multiplied by delta. And we need to go back to our spaceship manager and we need to set the unit scene that we want to create. So we're going to write variable unit scene is equal to preload and we need to give it the unit file. So let's go to scenes and give it the spaceship. Next, we need to create a function to spawn the unit. So we're going to write. So we're going to write function spawn unit. We're going to give it a new position to set it to. And the first thing that we need to do is instantiate it. So create a new instance of the unit and set its current position to the new position. And because it's the main scene of the map or the world scene, then I'm just going to call the a child and give it the unit. Inside of the ready function, I'm going to call randomize. And I'm going to create a for loop for creating all of the units. So inside of that, we're going to call the spawn unit function that we created. And for the new position, I'm going to create a vector free with a random range between the 
minus of the map limits and the plus of the map limits. So map limits dot x dot y dot z and it's going to create a unit inside of the map limits. So let's save it and let's go to 3D view. Inside of it, I'm going to add a camera 3D. Let's move it back. So around here and up like that. Now, before we run it, I want to make sure that the spaceship is a little bit smaller. So let's go to the mesh, go down, go to transform, and I'm going to set the scale to 0 0.5. Let's save it, go back to Spaceship Manager, and so that we can move around the scene, I'm going to add, I'm going to add the free look camera. So I'm going to download it, click on install. Let's go back and I'm going to add it to the camera node. And let's also go back to our spaceship manager. Let's change the map limits to 20 and set the number of units to 200. Now let's try to run our scene. So if we try to run our scene now, then it's not going to work because we didn't set the radius or area to catch all of the neighbors around the unit. So they are just going to move individually. So let's go back, go to the spaceship, and we need to add a new area 3D. Let's add a collision shape. And it's going to be a sphere shape. Let's go to the sphere and I'm going to set the radius to 0 0.5. Let's go to our area 3D. And we need to set the area entered and area exited signals. So let's connect it. And inside of it, I'm going to write unit array dot append, and I'm going to get the parent of the area. So if, for example, it's going to be a unit, we're going to get the area first, and then we're going to get the parent, which is the spaceship. Let's do the same thing for the area exited, but we're going to call the erase function. And let's save it. Let's go to our spaceship and in the inspector we have all of the variables that we can change. So for now I'm going to set the neighbor radius to around 5 and the alignment weight to around 3. Let's save it. Let's go back to our scene and let's run it. Okay, so let's run the scene. And as you will see now, the units start to group together with the neighbors around them using the area 3D that we created. And they're going to change the position depending on the units that are going to be added to the group. So yeah, that's the code for the flocking behavior. And in the second part, we're going to make them move to a common goal. So let's say a space station that they're going to try to move towards. And we're also going to limit the movement to a small area using the map limit that we created. So that's it for part one. I hope you enjoyed and I see you all next time.